Second Doug. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm delighted to take this call, which I know has been eagerly awaited by uh, members opposite, <laughs> and I'm delighted that uh, they've stayed around in such great numbers to hear this, this contribution. But before I speak in support of the statute amendments bill, Mr Speaker, I was on my feet uh, last night speaking on another measure when the dinner adjournment interrupted me. You were not in the chair at that time, but you were when, I, when we returned after the dinner adjournment. And so, Mr Speaker, I was remiss at that time in not congratulating you on your elevation to the role of Assistant Speaker. In fact, your return to that role. So may I congratulate you now and say it's particularly good to note that a, uh, a fine member of Scottish descent will be proudly wearing a tartan <laughs> tie, albeit the wrong tartan, uh, in the Speaker's chair. And I look forward to, to seeing it. I have to say that uh, being a sept of the Buchanan clan, we probably have the most bilious tartan in existence, which is why I only bring mine out on very special occasions, but I will do, do so on St Andrew's Day. <laughs> bring them Mr Speaker, I'd like to return, if I may, to the contribution that was raised by, or that was uh, made by your namesake, uh, Mr Robertson, the member for Wellington Central, because he spoke at some length and lamented what he described as a lack of direction and a lack of a plan in this particular bill, and in particular with some comments that were directed at um, the member for Te Tai Tonga. I have to say that the only thing really that was lacking in direction and a plan was uh, Mr Robertson's contribution, because it was very hard to see how on earth he reached some of the conclusions he did about a measure such as the Statutes Amendments Bill, which has the support of all parties in this House. But I do want to make the comment in reply to him that the picture that has, he was talking about in relation to women's refuges in this country is not as he described. In fact, when there was some concern a year or so ago, I took the opportunity to go and visit the women's refuge in my electorate and it was made very clear to me that of course there are always challenges in operating a women's refuge and of course it is essential by the very nature of the sensitive work that they are doing that they operate below the radar but nevertheless they are doing a very good job and they would simply refute some of the criticisms that have been made by them and I want to acknowledge the contribution that Rahui Katane made in this matter earlier this, this morning. Mr Speaker, it is good to see that there is cooperation in this House on this particular measure. Those who are listening or watching this debate at the moment may not be aware of the long history of statutes, amendments, bills in New Zealand, but in fact they are a very efficient and effective way for Parliament to operate. And I was intrigued when Mr Locke was speaking earlier that he was lamenting the fact that we are discussing this particular measure under urgency. I'd simply make the point that, of course, the primary focus of our urgency at this moment is to enact the very important measures for the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. The Select Committee is beavering away today in Christchurch as we speak, hearing from all interested parties down in Christchurch, and I know that they appreciate that opportunity. They're grateful for the Select Committee for going down there. And it is appropriate that we are in a position to continue with the work from second reading right through committee stages to third reading when they are back in the House tomorrow. And today is an opportunity for us to make significant progress on a broad range of measures. And it perhaps behoves us all in this House to, to remember that when we are inclined at times to waste the time of this House, as members opposite frequently do, then there are going to be consequences. And today is our opportunity to ensure that Parliament makes good progress. We did so yesterday. We will continue to do so today. And we should not be demeaning of this particular statutes amendment bill, because as I mentioned, these are measures that have long been used to very good effect in this parliament. And here we have a bill that actually amends 20 different statutes. Those who are listening to the debate might wonder, well, how do you do that and why is it necessary? Well, the answer is simply that it is inevitable that mistakes occasionally made. They're usually minor drafting errors, sometimes as minor as a spelling error, but it is important that when they are detected that they are corrected, and this is an efficient way of enabling the House to do so. And so, as has already been mentioned today, we're looking at minor amendments to the Wills Act, the Charities Act of 2005, Civil Defence Emergency Management Act, the Companies Act, Judicature Act, Criminal Proceeds Recovery Act, and so on. All important measures that have huge implications particularly for uh, professions and for the not-for-profit sector in our community. 
and there are many others as well. So I would want to ensure that we keep on track. If Mr Robertson believes that in undertaking a measure of this type we are somehow lacking in a plan or lacking in direction, I invite him to look again at what we're actually doing here. I can't imagine that there's a single member of this House who would take issue with any of the amendments, any of the changes that are being planned. I therefore have great pleasure in endorsing them and I commend the measure to the House. I call the honourable member 